Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG Creative Phaser 3. Previously, we wrapped up our feature for being able to catch monsters. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description for the source code to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be links to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. Let's get started. Now that we've wrapped up our feature on catching monsters, we're going to start working on our next feature for our game, and that's going to be a new event system. Our new event system is going to allow us to do things like have in-game cutscenes, have branching dialogue for our NPCs, have our NPCs take actions like give our players items or monsters, and much more. Later on, this system then could be used to build a full story for Monster Tamer. So to see an example of what we're building, I'm going to go ahead and start a brand new game. And so as soon as we start a world scene, if I move my character, we'll see now this new cutscene bar appears and we have this NPC character show up, walk to our player, and then start talking to us. And so these red rectangles that we see here, these are our event zones we'll be adding to our game. By default, these won't be visible, uh, but we'll have this feature toggle so we can turn them on and off while we're testing. So when our player overlaps with our event zone here, that's going to trigger our event. And so our events will be all configuration driven through JSON. And so in this event here, we have the mom NPC show up to start talking to our character. And so after she talks, she kind of gives us our next direction for our game where, hey, the professor was looking for you, and when we're done, the NPC goes back to where they were, our cutscene ends, and now our player can move around our scene. And so we'll be updating our data manager to keep track of which events we've seen, so then that way we don't re-trigger those events. The other piece to this, we'll be able to set story flags for when these events happen, we can now have our NPCs react differently to us. Uh, so previously our NPC would talk to us about reading signposts, and now it's saying, hey, I last saw the professor heading out of town. Uh, similarly, if we go into our house and we talk to the mom NPC, she'll no longer heal our player, and instead she's going to say, hey, the professor is looking for you. And so now this is like the beginning of our game where we're just first starting out and we don't have any monsters. And so if we go into our monsters, we'll see that our menu now shows, hey, we have no starting monsters. And now our goal for our game is to find our professor. All right, so our one NPC mentioned our professor headed out of town. So if we try to head and leave the town, we trigger our next cutscene. And so now the professor shows up, he'll start talking to us and he's saying, hey, wait right there, it's dangerous. And he's going to give us our first starting monster, and so he's going to give us our Iguana Knight, and then he's going to go ahead and leave. And now that should be our trigger for going to our monsters. We now receive this monster from our professor, and now we can begin our game. Now if we go back and talk to our NPCs, since we've talked to the professor, we'll see now their dialogue has changed, and now he's telling us, hey, we can read those signs for tips. Likewise, if we go into our house and we talk to our mom NPC, we'll see that she'll now heal our team just like she did before. So now that we've seen what we've been building, let's jump over to our project task list and we're going to quickly go over what we need to complete in order to implement this feature. So for our cutscenes and endgame events, we're going to start off by updating our NPC animation logic. Currently, our NPC class has a hard-coded value for the animation we like to use since we only have one NPC that's animated in our game. With our new event structure, we're going to have other NPCs that are animated, so this is a good time to refactor our class to support multiple animations. So this is going to involve updating our animations file to include our new animations for our various NPCs, and then we'll be updating our NPC class to support some new fields. Next, we'll work on updating our map data and tiled to have this new event block here. So we'll add a new object with a unique ID and we'll use that for creating our event zones in Phaser. So then that way our player can interact with these zones. So once we update our data and tiled, we'll need to update our game code to create these new event zone areas and to parse that data from tiled. Once we have our data from tiled, we're then going to work on creating a new events JSON file. And so for our events, we're going to make this all config driven. And so we're going to have a new JSON file that will have an array of events. Each event object is going to have things like a unique ID, what actions we need to take in our game for this cutscene. So like having an NPC appear, move to the player, move back to its original location, talk, and different things like that. So we're going to define that overall structure, and then we'll update our code to handle loading in this file and then parsing that data, similar like we did with our other JSON file so far. Once, we're, once we've updated our code to handle loading in this data, we'll then start working on updating our NPC and our world scene to handle these various actions. And so this is what we'll add in our code for handling these events. And so this will be for things like triggering our cutscene animation here, then when it's going to have our NPC show up and move to our player, talk to the player, and then even give our player uh, monsters. 
Once we have that working, we're now going to add support for story flags. And these story flags are going to be indicators for where we're at in our game, and they're going to be used for that branching logic for our NPCs. So when our game first starts, we won't have any story flags, but after we talk to the mom NPC, she's going to set a flag that's going to say, hey, we're looking for the professor. When that flag is set, we'll be able to have our NPCs react differently to us based on what flags are set in our game, and they can also be used as a requirement for triggering our other events. So we'll work on updating our event structure and our existing NPC structures to support this new flag field so then that way we can have our game be a little more dynamic. So once we have our story flag logic in place we're going to wrap up by actually creating our cutscenes. And so in Phaser we're going to create a brand new scene to have our cutscene animation play in and then that way we can play it on top of any of our active scenes and then we'll also update our dialogue UI so then that way it can appear on top of our other Phaser scenes. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to start building out our feature, and we'll start off by updating our animation logic for our NPCs. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see the links on your screen now.